For Love of the Game is a series that recognizes Murray State's best and most compelling athletes. We'll explore athletes' careers from their perspective, in their words. These are their stories on episode two, Racer Football's TJ Warren. For Love of the Game, I'm Jonah King. I'm sitting here with Racers Football safety, TJ Warren. Uh, first and foremost, CJ, the season just ended, and um, how are you doing personally? The pop it off, it, it's just a lot of mixed emotions. Yeah. Um, being in college for five years, um, playing the game, I love the game, I will do anything for it. It's It's just over. Like, it's not over, because I, I know I'm – I believe I'm going somewhere else, but the, just playing on a college Saturday, like you know for sure you're doing something every Saturday, doing the game you love. So these last two weeks have been really, really hard for me, trying to really get over like college is over. Like college is just uh, something that every, every child should experience. College football is just a beautiful thing, walking in the stadiums, thinking about what play you're going to make that day. It's, so just a lot of mixed emotions dealing with like where I want to be and what I want to do. So let's um, before we you know we get into what happened this year and through your college career, let's take a step back. You uh, grew up in Georgia, right? Yeah. So take us through because I, especially for me as someone that grew up in Florida, Florida, Texas, Georgia. When people think of like young people growing up playing football, they think of the South. So for you, what was it like playing football in the South at a young age? <laughs> That's kind of funny. Um, yeah, like you said, it just that's that South ball. Like when you want to go see a peer athlete, you'll go to the South. You'll go to Florida. You'll go to the Georgia. You go to Texas. Sometimes Alabama. But like, you, like Georgia football was just a mixer of the in between. Because you go to Florida, you got your speed guys. You go to Texas, you got your your big boys. But Georgia, we we're in the middle. Right. So growing up, just like knowing like Georgia ball, you have to like first they think we country. So, so you gotta just think about how how you gonna come up in that Georgia football because I talk smack every day like you won't last in Georgia football because it's like we play hard no smash football like you you hit now and you ask questions later. So growing up in that atmosphere, it really made me like play with an edge every time I get on the field. And like you were like three four star recruit, so you had major colleges and stuff coming for you. How was that experience for you? Ah, oh, that's just, that. That was another time. I was, I grew up in a single mother household, so I didn't have her. I'm the oldest, so I didn't have nobody older to look up to, and so and my mom didn't know, really know what was going on because she didn't go to high school right after high school. Um, go to college right out of high school. Right. So it it was just like uh, a time to live, a time to live like the best time of our lives. Me and my mom were just enjoying like. I'm about to go to college. Like, that's just something big right there. Like, and then it's about to be paid for. So that was just a blessing just to see different schools know who little TJ is in Kanye, Georgia. Right. So it was just amazing. Like, it's just like you had to live in that moment to understand, like, when somebody is willing to pay everything for the next four to five years of your life just to get a college degree and play, on the, play the sport you love, it, it was just amazing. What do you feel like football taught you? Like, did you feel like football taught you a lot of values wise? Because you said like, you know, growing up without a father figure, like, you know, for, it's it's difficult. Like, you know, that's it. Usually, you kind of have to find that guidance somewhere else. So, was that it for you, or did it come from somewhere else? I mean, you can say that was it for me because you build brothers on each team you are. Mm -hmm. But like, it made football made me find my purpose. Like, why do you want? to wake up at five o'clock in the morning for workouts? Why do you want to beat your body up every day, go hit somebody else that's probably your same size or even bigger and just run up with them against each other every day? Like, why, why, why? It was always that why. And football made me realize like, what's my why? And I can say like, it, it, it brings you, it makes you think about like, where do you want to be? How do you want to challenge, challenge yourself every day mentally, physically? And like, People don't think people think football is a physical game, but it's really mental. Right. Like, how do you really mentally like can come back from things? Because you can get beat on one play, but you got to think about okay, what I'm gonna do the next play. Like, 
all right, you got to let that last play go because it's mental. If you let if you let it hard, burden on yourself, you're going to beat yourself up for the rest of the game. Right. So you don't want to really, I say, hold back. You want to just let it all online and just know, like, you have a why for a reason why you're doing that. So you play safety now, um, and that, like, it's probably, like, one of my favorite positions just in the game of football because I remember growing up, like, I don't know who, like, who you were watching growing up, but, like, you just think of all those guys in the last couple of decades, like Ed Reed, your Brian Dawkins, like, like the safety position is just one of those things that just like you love it just because like you just see those guys fly across the field at 100 miles an hour and just hit somebody. Were, were there people for you, were there players for you growing up that you like kind of idolized or watched that you wanted to like model yourself after? I'm not going to lie. I didn't want to play defense. Never wanted to play defense. So to be that surprising that I'm playing defense and have a chance to play at next level on defense, I did want to play defense. Well, I want, what positions do you want to play? I wanted to play offense. I wanted to play either a quarterback position or a slot receiver or an H-back, like somebody that you just to put anywhere, like a running back, slot receiver, anywhere. And a person I, when I was growing up, growing up in Georgia, period, so Metro Atlanta area, Rockdale County, County of Georgia. So you got to think about, all right, if you're, at the time, a black quarterback that basically just run the ball and throw it, you're compared to Michael Vick. Right. So I grew up. Watching Michael Vick, like I had the Michael Vick cleats, I had, I had, I had it all. I didn't have his number though. I wanted my own number, so that's where that's the true. the era, the era of seventeen and number one was battling it out. So I wanted to be like just like Michael Vick. I'm, a, I'm a just run the ball. People forget like how amazing he was to watch growing up. Like people watch Lamar Jackson now. It's like, like he's obviously amazing at what he's doing, but Michael Vick was the first. Yeah. You know, it's funny you say that because um, there was a press conference one week where um, Coach Stewart was saying, like, like he was talking about you, like just kind of randomly brought you up. It's like, we have TJ, because I think it was after you did the, the, the fake punt and um, that you took it off and people were like, you know, oh, they didn't see that coming. And he's like, Coach was like, uh, TJ, like he keeps coming to me at practice. Like he wants, he wants to do this, he wants to do that. He wants to play every position on the field, da 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 um, so just just from your perspective, like were you at practices each week? Like, hey, I want to play court. Like, play. I want to get on offense. I mean, literally just this last week, I, I felt bad because they called the flag. But you were lined up in the Wildcat this week. That is that is very true. That is absolutely true. I, I because like everybody on the team just have their own swagger about themselves. So I, I used to just go to coach. If I didn't see something I like, I mean, I was a leader, so I just play around. So. If I ain't see something, I'm like, I'd be like, Coach, I can do that. I can do that. I can do better if that's what you want. So it, it, it was just something like just to get the the feeling going. Right. Just something to bring your own. Because, like, we didn't really play music this year during the season at practices. So he's like, bring your own juice. You you want to bring your own flavor. So I used to go out there every day. If somebody so if somebody drop a punt, uh, a punt return or a kick return, I'd be like, Coach, now you know you can call me if you really want somebody to catch the ball. Every day and it was just a, a joking thing. And then one day he looked at me, he said, come here. I'm like, ah. Oh. You know, this thing, one of them things you're going to get in trouble. I'm like, ah, oh, man, I'm talking too much. Uh, he said, catch this ball right here. So I caught a few. He was like, okay. The next day I, I was on starting on a special team, that kick returner and punt returner. Uh, and it was just amazing, like, just to have that interaction with Coach Story because, like, like he he didn't. Why would you trust a safety that's about two eighteen? Just one or back there filling punts. And but when he had trust in me, for me just bugging him every day about it, and this it was just fun. <laughs> so then yeah, this week you did see me line up at uh, Wildcat quarterback. We had a little a little some some just for the, the seniors, and I'm glad he made me the person to do it. Yeah, I was so sad because I was like, then they called the flag. I'm like, <laughs> oh man, let my guy get in the end zone real quick. Um, so speaking of, um, you know, kind of your relationship um, with the coaching staff, there, we also heard like um, you were a leader in the locker room. Was that something that you, like you came in, you were a leader immediately or was that something you had to learn over time? Since I was only here for two years, I came in and it was just, uh, they, they wanted, you can tell like the team, they wanted to see like what I was gonna bring to the table. 
But it was like also at the same time, it's something I had to learn and like gain res trust and respect from the guys. Like, they never made it easy for me like to come over. Like they was like, why should we listen to him? Like he doesn't know too much. He hasn't been here from the beginning. So like it, it, it took a good moment for them to really gain the trust. Um, it was definitely a learning experience because it's so many different things like I see on the team that like it's just potential. Like people, but people give up on themselves too easily. And it was like, I don't want that. So like it, it, it was, it was a thing to learn because it's like I'm used to somebody like you just tell them one thing they, they get up and go. But here you literally had to sit down and talk to somebody and see how they really feeling, how they really thinking. So that I can say that really helped me a lot because I realized it's just everybody's not built the same. Everybody just not breathe the same. So you got to do different approaches with different people and that helped me really, I think, become a strong leader on this team. Uh, how do you want your kind of career, your legacy here to be remembered? Honestly, a kid that just loved playing football. Just a kid that's going to go out there every day like, and just enjoy the game, no matter if he gets beat on a play or he make a play. Just, just go out there and enjoy the game because, like, yeah, they put me. They made the call. They put me in the right place. But if you don't have the love and the passion for the game, it it doesn't. Why are you doing it? So I just want to be remembered as somebody that's just always loved the game and always would play with a grit and attitude. What was your favorite play from this last season? Fake punt. My first fake punt. The one you ran. Mm -hmm. The one I ran against EIU. I can just remember because the whole season. Like when we first put it in, I've been begging coach on it. I said, let's do it, let's do it. Come on, I'm ready, I'm ready. He said, no, let's hold on. Like, there's no point, we saving it. And then we got in the conference play. I'm like, man, this ain't never gonna be calling. So I'm like, I'm like, this man got me taking all these hits from these big boys rushing up the middle just so I can protect this little Australian dude named Steve. So I'm mad, so I'm, okay, you can see I'm frustrated. I'm just like, ugh. So we playing EIU second uh second conference game. Right. It's fourth in the, it's fourth quarter. Um we're about to give the ball back to them. It was a punt. And I can just tell like the sideline was just very not there. But it was just like something that dang, we can't lose. Like we work too hard, we can't lose. Right. So I just saw it and then Coach Hunter looked at me. It was about fourth and nine. He looked at me. He looked for the radio to see what the call was. And then um, Coach George said, let's give him a go. I said, oh, I heard it through the headphone. Coach Sonic didn't know I heard it. So I'm in my head already jumping like, okay, they done messed up. So so Coach uh, Coach uh, Hunter gave me the call. I ran on the field. I said, okay. I gave the call to the uh, huddle. Do, do, do. I did my check. I said, oh, yeah, this is my time. So I lined up. I was ready. I gave the call. Day Day set. He hiked it. I ran. I just remember like somebody came, dove at my leg. I spent. I stayed up. I said, "Oh no, I still got it from high school." That's when I really, I really was about to lose myself right there. I'm like, "Oh, I still got it from high school." I'm standing up on one leg doing a whole spin. And that just next thing, I just charged down the field. Then next, you know, I, I could have scored. I was just tired, and I tried to run the dude. I really tried to run the dude over. I'm not even gonna lie. I tried to run the punt return over. I'm like, let me see if I really got it. So I tried to run him over, but that didn't end too good. He got kind of, he got kind of low. I didn't think he was gonna get that low. So, but just being in that a moment and experiencing that that play from this season, it made me really think about like, wow, I still got it from high school. Like, when you arrived um, at Sanford Stadium, home of the Georgia Bulldogs. You had Herschel Walker in there, packed house. You had family and friends there, or? Of course. Oh man, what was what was that like? Just feeling like like was there like a different vibe for you especially like? Cause that, I mean, I was in that stadium, and like you know, I wasn't even on the like I was on the field, but I wasn't on the field field. Like I just was like, this is different. I can definitely say, it felt amazing because uh, I mean. Growing up in Georgia, playing high school football at Rockdale County. Um, when you go to those Georgia camps over the summer, like Georgia 707 and stuff like that, the camps they hold, you always want to – You I, like, even though I didn't want to go to Georgia, didn't want to stay in Georgia, but, like, 
you always wanted to play on Georgia Field. Because, like, going up there on 707s playing, and hopefully if you made a championship, I didn't. But knowing, like, you have a chance to go on that field, like, it's a, it was a blessing. So now doing it my senior year, I mean, I went into the stadium before, but I was a redshirt year, so I wasn't playing. And all the other opportunities, they just came to Mizzou. So when I had the chance my senior year to go there and play on the play on that field, and it was their first um, opening game, so I knew the game was going to be packed. So it was just a blessing, like, just to be on that field and go out with a bang and just knowing I played, played some of my best ball on that field, it just felt great. Uh, what's the most fun defensive play to be involved in? I was thinking about this because, um, especially as a safety, you, you get to be involved in a lot of different types of plays. Is it more fun to be a part of an interception, to force a fumble, to do to hit a safety? I think you've done like every single one of these things too, or just lay somebody out? Because I mean that's just classic. Well, I'm an old school type of safety, so I'm gonna say lay somebody out. Oh, like over, like taking a pick to the house. Like you just rather just. Yeah, like I mean, if I, you get a pick, you get a pick. But I rather like, I hit somebody like just ooh, like I don't know, like have you ever been on you hit somebody and you just hit the whole crowd ooh, like the the stadium will literally go ooh, and then it's just quiet. And then after you hear that ooh, you just hear loud ah, and it's just crazy. Pre, what's what's your go-to pregame hype music? Pre-game hype music. First, I'm gonna start off with Young Nudie, EA. Then I'm gonna bounce around to probably some Bankroll Fresh, some old school hits that just get you right. Then I'm gonna go to probably go to me a little Lucci just to get my mind wondering. Like I wonder why. Then I'm gonna end it off with Oh, let's do it by Walker Flocker because it's. Let's do it now, cause that's when they about to start calling us up. Like when it's two minutes to go out into the uh, the walkthrough, it's just you gotta say, "Oh, let's do it." So I pull in that walker flocker to end it out, and I'm just going. And then they should know I'm ready. I'm locked in, and then just go in from there. Is there anything else? Um, just you feel that you want to say about you know whether it be about Murray State or the game of football or what's next for you? <sighs> this game. Brought a lot of good, bad, sad memories. And I just love it. And I'm glad I can put Murray State in that um, category. I can put it in my chapter um, of my life because Murray State, it honestly was a place that I, I, I brought calm, peace with myself. And I honestly like just relaxed and got back to myself and playing the game of football because when I first got here, I didn't know who I was. I didn't really, wasn't feeling myself. I'm like, this ain't me. But being here these two years, being in a nice place, like you don't really have to worry about a lot of things around you, just can focus on yourself. It really, really opened up a lot of things for me. <laughs> this game of football, it, it's, it's a blessing because it just brings you so many different things you never really, can see until you really look back and say, oh, I did that. I did do that. So I'll always love this game.